all right how's it going guys so i just picked up a dumpster yesterday from a really good customer repeat customer he keeps using me he's uh remodeling a single wide mobile home but uh he's been a really good customer um he hardly hardly looted it this time he says he wants another one i just charged up my battery overnight that's nice that's what's nice about keeping them the next day i'm able to charge them up but uh i just want to lift it up and show you what he put in here because he really didn't put much in here at all there's so much room in here look at this like you can tell from the sides Hardly anything in there. He kept it for a week. He wanted me to come pick it up, I guess. I said, uh, it's a week. You know, I'm going to come get it. And I said, do you want it again? He said, yeah, sure. So I'm thinking about telling him uh, I'll give him like a, a two-week discount because uh, I, uh, I think he needs more time. He's working by himself. He doesn't have a lot of... And he had this for a week, and this is all he put in here. So... Yeah, it'd be, be better for me, too, if I offer him, you know, a discount for two weeks because uh, he may only be thinking of renting it for a week. So if I give him a discount on two weeks, I don't normally do that, but I'm not super busy with the dumpsters right now, so I'll do it. But we'll see what he says. I'm going to go dump this and then uh, bring, it, bring it back to him. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to... I want to show you that my dumpsters uh i don't think i'm going to get around to doing this I've, i wanted to do this uh get them re, you know repaint them i had stickers all over them from the previous owner i still got to remove and uh i just haven't had the time i mean i want to sand. i guess i could do is sand them down kind of quick uh or maybe i might i might get somebody to do it for me i might there's a you know a couple local guys that do um like trailer refinishing, they sandblast it. I don't need the whole thing sandblasted unless the price is right, then maybe I would do that just to kind of get it back to, almost back to new. Get them to sandblast and repaint it. I mean, if they wanted to, if I can get them done for uh, under a thousand a piece, eh, it's probably gonna be more than that, but guys around here are pretty reasonably priced. So I'll have to see what they wanna charge me to, to do them and I'll get them all done this way. Uh, I know it'll get done quicker if I do that, you know. But um, my truck seems to be sitting really nice with the dump trailers um, and all the weight in the back of the truck. So before, well, before I had the truck uh, cargo glide and the truck vault and the cap, the truck, you know, sat up a little high with the hitch that I have, and I was hold, kind of holding off. You know, I wasn't sure if I needed to buy uh, an adjustable hitch. Uh, so anyway, with the, the added weight, it's sitting a lot nicer. Now, I'm not sure, but all my trailers make this noise. Now, going up, it's fine. But for some reason, going down, it's a pretty horrendous noise. I don't know what it is. I got to find out. If any of you guys know, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> That is, uh, could be turbulence, I don't know, in the hydraulic line, you know. But, uh, hey, I got a nice, nice new uh, addition to my M12 tool lineup. I picked this up last night. It's a mini bandsaw M12. It actually has um, the same capacity, I heard, that... Uh, has the same capacity as the M18. Um, yeah, it, there's a couple of them, but for the, I think for the lowest uh, model M18, that this has the same size opening or cut capacity. I think it's beautiful. The only thing I don't like about it, though, so far, is I don't like where the trigger is. Um, 
I gotta get used to that. I feel like it. Let me see. So if I was cutting something like this, I guess I'd get used to it, but I don't like these safety. I don't like all these safety. Some of some of these tools, it's so annoying to be able to press that, you know. And I know, I know you can, you know, come up with a way of disabling that. But I guess the manufacturers have to do that to be compliant with OSHA. Um, and I'm sure they don't recommend you doing that. And I'm not recommending anyone do that either. But I may do that. We'll see. If I don't, if I don't get if I don't get used to it. Um, I'll do that, but awesome new tool I just got yesterday. I've uh, been wanting that for a while. I should, I could have just bought one online, but I actually wanted to see it. And Home Depot just started carrying it by me, so got this. Um, I could have used it last week. Like cutting these notches out. See that? I cut the notches out on my trailer. Oh, I'm sorry, on my cap. So I want to show. That's something I did. I didn't update you guys on yet. Uh, hold on, I gotta climb up a little bit. All right, so and I notched it out in the middle here too. Let me get it focus. Okay, on the end also. Okay, so hard hard to do with one hand, but. This is this is kind of temporary. I'm gonna gonna come up with something a little better. But now I can put pipe or lumber. Now I traced out on here how I want to cut this out. Still thinking about it. <laughs> Haven't pulled the trigger yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this bandsaw would have been great for cutting these because uh, a sawzall just kind of shakes and shakes and rattles so much on like a thin piece of metal like that and nothing cuts like a bandsaw how smooth it is and there's hardly any uh, metal chips too but that would have been a perf i do have i do have a milwaukee bandsaw but it's a plug-in <laughs> and i just don't want to use it it would have been kind of just a pan it's big too i don't want to go get that but um yeah, I don't carry any corded tools, but uh, yeah, it's in my shop. So uh, I'm thinking if I cut this out, I you know made a couple marks because I was first I was going here, I thought it might might be too tight, and I thought about going here, and then I was going to cut it down here, but then I made a mark down here. I'm thinking I'm I'm going to go down here, or I might go up a little, but for this, what I probably do is take this out and get a two by ten. Um, you know, and then so it'll come all the way to the end. I would take all this out, two by ten from here to here, and then on the edge, I want to like round it a little bit or put a put an angle on the wood because if you're loading plywood like on an angle, I don't want it to be hitting metal. That's why I think I might have to come down here, or I'll go an eighth of an inch high, but then just put like a you know a bevel on the end of the two by ten. That'll help. And then I gotta put stoppers on the sides. And then I'm thinking, thinking what I would do is I have to figure out a way. I might have to just un, un take this nut off and prop it up with a piece of wood when I want to use it for loading or unloading sheets. So if I just take this out, you know, with a socket whatever or adjustable one of those um ratchet ratchet uh, wrenches and then i could let this go uh well actually it wants to push out so that's that's not hmm that would not be too good because well then i could just let it come down and just leave it there while i'm loading right and then when i'm done I just put it back up there and put the nut back on and then tighten it snug. Uh, I could even put like a wing nut on there to make it easier. That might be the ticket. That's, yeah. I don't know if they make wing nuts with lock the lock nut insert in there. 
You gotta see. That might be better. This way it doesn't vibrate loose, you know? Oh, so what I want to do also is when I cut this, when I figure out where I'm cutting it, I'm going to cut about half an inch or, yeah, about half an inch and then skip a half an inch and then cut again, skip, skip. This way I can bend it then, right? And it'll be easier to bend and it'll bend on that line, but it'll still have the strength in the metal. Uh, I might go I might go half inch then an inch of metal then half inch then an inch. I could weld it or I could just yeah, I could just leave it, but I'm going to I'm probably going to reinforce this when I cut it, but yeah, it's pretty much my only option for carrying sheets. But the thing is I don't I don't want to leave this here all the time. That's I already know that. Just from using the truck, I'm noticing that with this here, it just doesn't give me enough room to throw stuff in there. So, for the most, um, so most of the time, that's not going to be there at all. Okay. Um, this way, yeah, it gives me plenty of height. I don't really need it to be that high up back there. Um, yeah, so that's fine. I was saying before, um, oh, I actually took another video, but it cut off on me for some reason. I like how the cargo glide comes up and I'm able to access this platform from the back without having to open my tailgate. I mean, I'm able to reach in there a few feet, but it would be nice if I could slide this out with my tailgate up, but there's no way I could do that. I would have had to put this thing up so much higher because this is about six and a half inches tall right here so um, I'm starting to use these it's not very organized but I've been trying to I did a job on, on with this truck small electrical replacing a light fixture but packed my tool bag with everything I thought I need took it from my other truck so it is working out nice uh, just putting the things I need right in the back here um, the, the things I use most you know I don't have anything in that one yet um, oh but I let me show you I can't open it up that much because I have the trailer here and I'll show you guys later but uh, I've got a lot of tools in there um, I'll show you guys some other time. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep my power tools back there, the ones I don't use a lot in the back on both of them. I'll just use things I don't, that you need, but you don't need all the time. You know, like an SDS drill. You don't need that all the time. Um, I have my DeWalt version of the uh, whole hog. can't remember what. Oh, it's called a joint and stud drill i'm not sure <laughs> that's in the back there um sander router all the wall those are things i don't use on you know very very often so they could stay in the back and it's better to have all the weight up front for the drawers it's better and for the truck it's better too and then for the so the first two three feet i'll have the most commonly used things in the back here and then I'm thinking from there, so from, let's say, the first two to three feet, most commonly used things. Uh, then the next two to three feet, I'll have, like, parts. Switches, outlets, cover plates. Like, I'll do plumbing on one side, maybe, electrical on the other. And then in the very back, you know, last couple of feet or a few feet, I'll do the those tools I was talking about so now what I want to do is keep my DeWalt tools in this truck because this is not primarily my plumbing the van is the, the van's my plumbing truck I'm gonna keep I am keeping all just 12 volts in that truck the only thing I have that's 18 volt uh, Milwaukee is the uh, transfer pump that I use for emptying water tank you know water heaters and I might carry, I might get a Sawzall from 18 volt, keep that in there too. 
But I, I pretty much, I think everything is going to come out of that truck that is DeWalt. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep, like, I mean, I have a DeWalt battery operated, va operated vacuum, but, um, and I keep it in there. So I might get an, I might get another one for this one, or I might get the, the, I might put the DeWalt in here and get the, um, the Milwaukee M12 vacuum for that truck. That might be the good way to go. Uh, the only thing I don't have in that other truck, wait, I think I do have, I was thinking I didn't have a, uh, hammer drill but I think I do I think my 3 8 what is it a 3 8 no it's a half inch M12 I think it does have hammer drill function but it's not a very aggressive hammer drill so I may have to get get a beefier hammer drill we'll see I don't use it a lot to be honest so yeah I think uh, that's my plan so alright guys I'm going to go to the landfill now dump this I'm not going to uh, tape any of that. You've got, you guys have already seen me do that. and um, I just got to cover this up real quick. The tarp's already up there. And uh, head to the landfill. Hopefully I don't get any flat tires. I, I did pick up um, flat tire repair kits at Harbor Freight. And I, I got three of them. One for each vehicle that I have. Just in case... Um, I'm able to make a repair on the road. I keep an air compressor with me. That's another thing. I have to keep like double the tools, but I already have a lot of Milwaukee M12 and I have a lot of DeWalt too. And so it's kind of working out nice because for the handyman and the, the construction remodeling and uh, I think I might do some more electrical in this truck than the other one. That's probably the way I'm going to go. I don't mind that I like having the DeWalt's because I have most of the big tools in DeWalt's. And uh, that's just going to work out nice. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this truck up with just DeWalt. Pretty much just DeWalt. That means I need to get a DeWalt air compressor because I have <laughs> a, uh, a Milwaukee M12 compressor in there and a Ryobi. But I use that for blowing. I'm going to have to get another... Like, I might get a DeWalt air compressor for this one just to keep, you know, with the hose and everything just ready to go at any time. Then I guess I don't need a, an inflator. That's probably the, a good idea. So I keep, I keep my Milwaukee in the plumbing van to inflate pressure tanks and uh, expansion tanks and water, t you know, uh, well tanks. In this truck, I really don't need that kind of thing. As long as I have a tire... Uh, inflator attachment for the hose I don't so yeah I'm gonna think about that look into the DeWalt air compressor see if they um, have made any improvements on that and maybe get that so all right I'll wrap it up now guys thanks for watching I'll see you next time take care